the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Join Agata OK in episode 121 as we explore the profound impact of ending cycles of abuse and embracing a life of freedom, healing and empowerment. Holistic healing is, in my understanding, is, you know, working with your soul, working with your soul purpose and diving much deeper than than the surface here on planet earth and to me the massive help that i've received and support was from my own ancestors and angels because um they are the creatures the energy beings who their sole purpose now is is to help and support human beings in their journey and give them the the boost of love and unconditional love and unconditional support needed for them to carry on so if some if you believe that there is much more in here than just your physical eye can see and you open yourself up for a whole new level of support and love welcome to another episode of healing through love each week we share ideas experiences and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive we talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse no matter where they are on their journey this is all about healing through love and now here are your hosts Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, the space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host Rose Davidson and I am honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today we have a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving, sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you are in a safe space. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community. It's a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that resonates with the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and the unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring conversation, a quick reminder, if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach more hearts and spread the message of healing. And today my guest is Aga OK. And Aga is going to be discussing with us uh, overcoming narcissistic abuse with the help of a holistic healing. And Aga is... um, Oh, dear I mean, Ega is a holistic coach and a therapist who is of service to women who, like her, have experienced domestic violence and narcissistic, narcissistic, narcissistic abuse. For five years, she, uh, sorry, five years ago, she fled her uh, DV with her three-year-old daughter and was placed on an intensive journey and healing and rediscovery. Reconnecting with her spiritual gifts and understanding her role in the family as a cycle breaker, she is dedicated to inspire and help other women end cycles of generational abuse. She calls herself a unicorn in a field full of horses, which beautifully describes her personality as well as her mission on this planet. Aga, thank you so much for joining the Healing Through Love podcast. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I don't want want you to, you know, dive too too deep into your journey, but, you know, um, how did you find yourself doing what you're doing today? Um, Well, that was, that was, I feel, you know, it was like a shower, like a very cold shower when I got to the place when I was very honest with myself and I realized that I cannot carry on, you know, I cannot carry on bringing the abuse to the future generations of my of my lineage. I do not want the same 
future for my daughter as I experienced, as every single woman in my family experienced before me. You know, I was the first one to put a stop on it. And and thanks to me being ready, sending the signal to the universe that, okay, I am ready for change. I am that change that will then benefit myself, the situation of me, of my family, and then also for the future me. That was the moment when I realized, you know, I have been carrying this on generation by generation and I don't want to continue. And I have been placed on a path of healing and rediscovering my gifts because when I was a little girl and I told my caregivers about the things that I've seen, about the things that I knew and I felt and, and you know, it was not really welcomed right i was made to feel like i was different i was weird i was you know what i what i knew was even a bit dangerous right so i have pushed it very deeply inside me and and being able to stand right there and then ready i have i have rediscovered you know i have met many beautiful souls all along my journey who who reminded me that you have the gift and you can heal yourself and thanks to healing yourself you can help others absolutely and generational uh, trauma really is something that a lot of us live with and you know it's it's really hard to break that cycle i know i i did that with my my children um i grew up in in a in a violent home and a, um i was sexually assaulted by my father over a number of years. So I didn't want to bring that abusive behavior to my children's world. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do know how to break that generational cycle, but it, it it's hard for a lot of us because we've lived with it for so long. Um, you know, so overcoming, you know, that and and changing the 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 pattern of abuse within the family, it, it can be quite difficult. Absolutely, especially because when you are born within your family, you are inheriting all of those karmic cycles. And it's something so natural, natural, right? It's it's something that is already there. So why would you change it? And as well, I feel like it's extremely important to say, you know, if there is an abuse going on within a family, then it is so often... Um, not spoken about right because it's it's within a family so it's a secrecy right it's a secret it's you know nobody speaks about it no one is being called out until the moment when the cycle breaker arrives right and they are the ones to call it out to call it by its name first of all and then um and then it causes a lot of it's like a tornado, right, within the family because, um, you know, family members very often, they don't even want to acknowledge that there is an abuse going on. They don't want to call it by its name. And and as cycle breakers, I always call us unicorns in a, fam in a field full of horses because there is a term called um, black sheep of the family. And I feel it it has such a negative impact. It has such a negative narrative, right? Because I am not a black sheep. I am that unicorn. I was born within my family for this purpose to break those cycles and replace them with something so beautiful and beneficial for everyone that I feel like it's such an important role. And, and it's an honor to be that unicorn in a field full of horses and and yes, and I called the abuse by its name. I called every single person out. And today, you know, it resulted in me not having contact with them. But but I feel like it's, it's much more beneficial for me than having contact with them, than, you know, exposing myself to the abuse and therefore exposing my child to the possible abuse that I have experienced. And, and I don't want this. So... I chose myself, I chose my happiness, and I chose my freedom. And because I chose myself, my daughter will not have to experience the patterns. She will not be inheriting them. She will not be living by them. And she will not be repeating them. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 
it's it's um it's always good when you know we we uh, cycle breakers and I, I want to ask you Aga how can we find our voices after abuse you know it is so important that we speak up for ourselves and you know we we share our experiences with others but how can we find that voice to be able to share our experience that is an excellent question because I would say always after you've been experiencing an especially narcissistic abuse or any sort of abuse, you are being made to believe that everything you say is a lie. You, even you start to believe yourself that maybe I make this up because there was so many times whilst I was going through the abuse when I when I was like this, I was like, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the maybe I'm just making it bigger than it is maybe it's maybe I overthink everything maybe you know this poor guy I should just leave him alone maybe he's not doing anything and he made me to believe that if I go to court if I go anywhere like nobody will believe me because he created such a perfect public persona right so finding your voice it's very difficult because on one part one part of you needs to speak about what happened to her, needs to make someone aware of what was going on. And the other part of you is like, but no one is going to believe me. Nobody will want to listen to me because you were made to believe nobody will. Because that was the interest, that was in an interest of an abuser to make you believe like this. But when you start speaking up, just find even one person to tell it to, to tell your story to, or even tell it to yourself to the mirror, right? Look at yourself in the mirror and listen to yourself voicing it all out because when it's all in your head, it's all over the place, right? But once you voice it out, once you talk about it, you'll be able to hear it all. And that happened with me. I found an old friend of mine and I said to her, look, things I've told you about my marriage, about my relationship, they were not really exactly what I said it was. Because, you know, when you experience the abuse inside of your home, you want the outside world to, to think that you're doing so well, that everything is fine. You don't want them to know what's happening. And I was so embarrassed and ashamed, even in front of my own mother, to, to admit that, you know, you were right about him. Because, you know, it takes a lot of courage. But... You just need to answer yourself this simple question. You know, what is more beneficial to you? Carrying on as you are or facing the uncomfortable truth, doing it for yourself so you can, you know, take a step forward. Because with every little thing that you do, you know, start talking to someone about it. Acknowledge that, Okay, and take responsibility that something is not right. You need, you are the one. You put yourself in the situation for a reason, but you can also take yourself out of this situation. And I think that's that's the key, you know, realizing what is best for you. And then once you realize that, once you make that decision, send that signal to the universe, I'm ready the path will unfold in front of you. You don't have to know every single step on your journey. You just need to know that one step that you're going to take. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I came to the realisation at the beginning of this year that I'd been living in an abusive relationship for the past 30-odd years. Um, I don't know what um, wow. I don't know what prompted this realisation. I have no idea. But for me to realise that, it was like... Um, a weight had been lifted off my shoulders uh, when I realised that the things that had been happening to me weren't okay and that um, uh, the abuse was so subtle that, you know, I, I yeah, I didn't, I hadn't realised it. I, I don't know whether I'd read something somewhere or it just came into my my view that this is what was happening to me. But, you know, for 30 odd years, I've been living in this abusive relationship and and, and not realised it. And maybe, or, or perhaps I had realised it, but didn't want to believe it. But um, yeah, I think it's quite difficult when it's so, 
no, I don't know, something that you, you live have lived with for such a long time that you don't perhaps realise that you are living in an abusive relationship and that, you know, you are more worthy than what you give yourself credit for. Absolutely. And when you when you realise that, it it is like you've said, the, the lift has been, the weight has been lifted off your shoulders. But at the same time, you know, Exactly. There is there comes this. I would call it an anxiety because then you start wondering, okay, what now? What's gonna happen now? How how am I gonna do all of this? And and very often, especially women, when they want to escape an abusive relationship, you know, when all so many of those questions start to pop into your head, it feels like it's such a difficult mountain to climb. And unfortunately, very often people choose to stay in the abusive relationships because they already know what they can expect. They already know that feeling. They know the situation. They know the energy around all of that. And to break that pattern, to to step out of it, it's extremely uncomfortable, let's be honest, because you have to face so many difficult decisions, so many. It's a life-changing situation it's a you taking that step that will change the whole trajectory of your life and and it is scary oh absolutely yeah it totally is and you know and I'm still living with with my with my husband because he's got Alzheimer's and so I don't want to just abandon him when he you know is in need of care so I'm still living in that in that type of relationship um and I've sort of come up with strategies now so that, you know, I don't put myself into, I mean, he's not physically abusive, so I'm you know, I'm safe in that in that regard, but it's just the, the um, narcissistic behaviour that, you know, I've had to learn to overcome in the last few months. Um, and, you know, and I'm, you know, going through that healing process, but, you know, with what um with what you do, you you promote holistic healing. How can you help, or you know, give some advice or or strategies for our listeners today on how they can overcome narciss narcissistic? I really really have a difficulty saying that word um, abuse. You know, through holistic healing. Um, holistic healing is, in my understanding, is you know, working with your soul, working with your soul purpose and diving much deeper than, than the surface here on planet Earth. And to me, the massive help that I've received and support was from my own ancestors and angels because um, they are the creatures, the energy beings who their sole purpose now is, is to help and support human beings in their journey and give them the, the boost of love and unconditional love and unconditional support needed for them to carry on. So if some if you believe that there is much more in here than just your physical eye can see and you open yourself up for a whole new level of support and love. And as like I said before, work of a cycle breaker, it could be very lonely because, you know, it could get to the point when none of your family members or, or old friends will speak to you. And when you open yourself up for support of your ancestors who have lived the life that you were living at, up to that point, they are the experts in the field who, you know, some of the ancestors, once they cross, they really want to help the cycle breaker, the unicorn in the family. They really want to help them breaking those cycles, identifying more of them and, you know, calling everything as it is. And they, you know, they've got so much beautiful insights and, and wisdom to share because they do not have the the human um, characteristics like, like the judgment and, you know, the, they, they're they not interested in any of that. They're only interested in supporting you in your journey, helping you breaking those karmic patterns that they used to 
some of them create even or you know they used to repeat themselves so um i feel like you know it is an absolute honor to be able to to connect with the ancestors and anyone can do that obviously you know with the right support and and guidance but everyone can do this and everyone can access support of their own ancestors and angels and you know for someone it might be it might be funny right but for me i have lived with this for so many years and i have been able to to get the the help of of these beings and you know to for me it works and i am always open for all the signs all the communication and i can recognize the signs because they will always you know your angels your ancestors they will always communicate with you in the way that you understand so and they will never give you anything that you are not ready for so if you have that in mind i feel you know it's a road to success because you you have all the tools needed to do the work and when you are not alone when you have the feeling you are not alone you can move mountains absolutely yeah i i um you know i i often think that holistic healing is you know it can be beneficial to a lot of people and sometimes as you say you need to to be able to listen and and hear you know from your guides guardians angels um and sometimes it's not so easy for for some of us who are you know a little bit closed mind minded about the whole process but um you know i think if you just open up your heart and open up your mind um you know the 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 solutions will come to you or they'll be given to you absolutely and you know you can always start with asking your guides asking your angels for a little sign that they are there that they are in your presence and and just open yourself up and you will be surprised how quickly you will receive that sign and you know i feel like this is another extra boost of feeling secure because you know there is this whole stigma about healing and working with you know other spiritual beings that are not humans here on earth it, it is you know I've heard so many stories and, you know, but if you are open, if you open your heart, it doesn't cost you anything to open your heart. And just, you know, a little bit of curiosity. I think every single person on this planet has that curiosity in them. And just just check it out. Just try. And you will be surprised how how it will make you feel because presence of your angels, when they are present in your space, it's so uplifting. You feel so safe and you will feel much better. Trust me, because, you know, I, I was scared of it, right? Due to my own childhood, I was scared of my gifts. And when I, you know, someone needed to hold my hand, but they did. And I realized that it's such a safe space. It's the safest space I've ever been to. Wonderful, yeah, it, it, uh, and I agree with you. It's just opening your heart, take and and taking a listen. Now, Ago, um, your business is called Mama from Mama from the Moon, and you are on Instagram. Where can other where can where can people find you anywhere else? Yes, well, I am on TikTok. Um, I I don't share much on there, but there are there is loads of videos about you know the ancestral healing, the, the breaking of the cycles. Um, but yeah, mainly I am on Instagram and yeah, that's that's how you can find me and get in touch. Wonderful. So that's um Aga OK at on um, on Instagram with uh, Mama from the Moon. Aga, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had a really lovely time. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Music.